والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful I send praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I send peace and blessings to all of the prophets who came from the beginning of time from the time of Adam alayhi salam the time of Noah alayhi salam Noah to Ibrahim Abraham peace be upon him to Musa or Moses peace be upon him to Isa or Jesus peace be upon him and to the last prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him we ask Allah to bless them and to give them the best for their striving and what they have left and we begin in the greeting words of paradise assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah alhamdulillah all praises to Allah this month of ramadan is a great blessing for the believers the prophet muhammad peace be upon him came to teach what was taught by those who came before him he came as a seal as a finality of all of the prophets who lived on this earth from the beginning of time we know that prophets have come to every nation and every tribe prophets came to the chinese people to the indian people to african people to the middle eastern people to european people to every nation every grouping at one point in time had a messenger who taught them that they should submit to the creator of the heavens and the earth la ilaha illallah there is nothing worthy of worship but Allah azza wa jal almighty and majestic the prophets also had a type of sharia a type of law that was developed during their time according to their tribe according to their environment this sharia was developed but the prophet muhammad peace be upon him came not only to the arabs but to the non-arabs he came to all of humanity and to the jinn and he taught a message that was good not only 1400 years ago but it was also is also good and shall always be good till the day of resurrection he taught a message that all people could benefit from that the young and the old male and female black and white all languages can benefit from this message and one of the great teachings in it is fasting imsak as we would say in the arabic language abstinence that the person controls themselves that they abstain from eating from drinking from sexual activities during this blessed month of ramadan and this imsak is an activity that people throughout the planet are involved in many young people who are growing up within islam many middle-aged people who are finding their islam and many new muslims are asking the question what is the purpose of imsak what is the purpose of fasting even non-muslims who are looking into the muslim world and recognizing now that islam is not just a religion of the middle east that there are people fasting all over this planet even the non-muslim people are asking today what is imsak why are you doing this especially in this month in order to understand this we need to look at the very concept of abstinence itself because it is an activity that human beings are involved in all over the planet we could say it is even become part of the global culture of the world and when we say this we look at imsak in a number of ways number 1 there is a form of abstinence that is done for health reasons if a person uh, is struck with a heart attack and goes to the doctor and is complaining about their heart and maybe their arteries have been clogged up the doctor will say you should watch out for eating fatty foods you should stay away from cholesterol and so therefore you should do a type of imsak and so that person would then look at his menu and would shop in a certain way and cook the food in order to avoid fatty foods cholesterol uh, based foods if a person is struck with diabetes then the doctor would say stay away from sugar you should not take in sugar in your tea or in candy or in anything you have to avoid it so the person then begins a life of imsak 
where they literally dedicate themselves to stay away from sugar. Because through that dedication, they are actually gaining life. And so the imsak for the person who is struck with diabetes preserves his life. Imsak also comes for people who are struck with allergies. The allergy or the hasasiya, when this strikes the person, they have to do a test and they find out, am I allergic to peanuts? Am I allergic to, uh, uh, to sweet things? Whatever the person is allergic to, they will stay away from. And the doctor will say, you must do imsak. So you have to now structure your life around staying away from certain foods. You may have to stay away from the fur of dogs and cats. You may have to stay away from grass when it is newly cut. But you have to control yourself. And so the purpose now, or part of the purpose of this person's life, is to preserve themselves through imsak. And so imsak is very crucial for people all over the planet for health reasons. Imsak also, especially within the 20th century, is an expression of political uh, life. We find that people are involved in a special form of imsak that they call hunger strikes. So therefore you find in many prisons of the world, when the prisoners are complaining about uh, poor conditions, there are too many prisoners in one cell, they are not being fed properly, they are being tortured by their, the prison warden, then they will do a type of imsak. That is a hunger strike. And so they will not eat food, they will stay away from food, and they will move as a group involved in this hunger strike in order to get their message across. And a hunger strike has rules, it has kawait, where you actually have to learn, and the people who have done hunger strikes before, they will tell you, if you are involved in this strike, then you should lessen your physical activities. You should stay out of the sun. They will give you lessons so that you are able to carry out your hunger strike for a long period of time. And so when the group within the prison does the hunger strike, then the word gets out to the world, the newspapers report it, and the prison authorities are usually forced to change the conditions of the prisoners. So therefore, this imsak, this abstinence, was done for political reasons. And people are involved in this, they look forward to it, and they even consider it to be one of their strong activities to gain justice within society. Young people today especially are involved in a new form of imsak, and that is abstinence for beauty's sake. Beauty now in many parts of the world is connected with being thin. And so therefore people will try to stay away from uh, uh, carbohydrates and stay away from sugar and they will eat less in order to be able to wear the special designer uh, jeans or to put on certain clothing. They feel that having a thin body is a sign of being a modern person so they will do imsak. They will stay away from foods. They will stay away from sweets in order to be beautiful. In the extreme case, anorexia, there are even people who will literally throw up their food because they are afraid of breaking the rules of imsak for beauty's sake. So therefore, in the global culture today, which is being spread in the media of the world, uh, a, a slim look is, 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 is pushing young people to imsak. Islam, which is the religion of all the prophets and all nations, is special because the reason for fasting has been given to us by the creator of the heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the final revelation, in chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah, the, the, the second chapter, verse 183, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqun. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed on you as it was prescribed on those who came before you in order that you would have taqwa, in order that you would have God consciousness. Now people in many religions look at fasting as a type of expiation, a punishment for the body, a type of physical purification. But in Islam, the final revelation, divine wisdom 
has been given to us from above seven heavens, la'allakum tattaqun, so that you would have taqwa. What is taqwa? The great scholars of Islam have told us it is a combination of al-khawf wa raja, fear and hope. It is a wiqaya, it is a shield, a spiritual shield surrounding the believer. And so the fasting is not for beauty's sake. It is not a punishment. It is not for political reasons. It is not for health reasons, although in many cases we can gain good health. Our, our, our bodies will beautify. But that's not the purpose. It is to gain the consciousness of Allah. It is to gain that uh, our feeling of the presence of the Creator of the heavens and the earth that drives us towards right action. It helps us to be pious because we recognize the presence of the Creator and we give up food for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We give up drinking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine people living in the desert who need water in order to survive, but they give up the water for the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Imagine people who don't have that much food, but they will still give up their food for the Creator of the heavens and the earth. So fasting, when it is done for Allah, gives the believer a type of consciousness that they are able to come out of the month renewed with vigor. They recognize the presence of the creator of the heavens and the earth. They have a shield around them. So when evil things have been, uh, are given to them, when the drugs are coming in the urban cities, when people are offering them to eat haram foods, when gambling comes and it appears that gambling will gain them something in this world. When the tests and trials and temptations of this world are placed before the believer after the month of Ramadan, it is the shield, it is the wakaya, it is the fasting that comes to the assistance of that person. It is the consciousness of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creator of the heavens and the earth, that stops that individual so that they are able to say, no, I will not take those drugs. I will do it for Allah. No, I will not gamble. I will do it for Allah. No, I will not eat haram food. I will do it for Allah. Yes, I will pray on time. I will do it for Allah. Yes, I will go to pilgrimage if I have the istita'a, the ability. I will do it for Allah. So the lessons of Ramadan, the fasting becomes a shield. It becomes a stimulant for that person for the rest of the year. This is divine wisdom. And we are blessed as Muslims to be the followers of the last and greatest prophet, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Peace and blessings be upon him. May Allah bless him forever and give the Muslims success in this life and the next. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.